kick it off with, uh, with Dennis Schindler. He's gonna show some of his magic. I'm very happy, very excited for this camp. Very happy you all made it. And uh, yeah, all, I know Dennis as the guy that whoops my ass, hence the name Amsterdam Ass Whooping. So I'm doing the further introduction. He can introduce himself and his background and then we're gonna have some fun. Yeah, give it up. Awkward. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Uh, I'm glad you made it and I'm really looking forward to the camp. So thanks for all for making it happen and inviting me. So I'm really, really stoked to see people that I've been met, I've met on different camps and new folks as well. And some old friends I haven't seen for a while. No kissing when I'm around, please. Thank you. So what we're gonna do today is pummeling. Pummeling is a big, big topic altogether. We're gonna talk about pummeling from the top to get into passing positions and to not get lacklocked in the process. That's more or less what we're gonna do. It's a very important skill set for people that like to play on top because if you can't out pummel your opponent, you're not gonna get anything going and it's gonna be really, really hard to not get attacked, especially with people that like to enter into the legs, right? So. I guess, I, I'm not sure what Corey's showing, but I think he's gonna show headquarter passing at some point and it will fit together pretty, pretty well. Um, I'm big into terminology, so if I am talking nonsense to you, just tell me, I'll explain everything, right? But as long as you don't say anything, I'll just assume that you know what I'm talking about. So just give me a heads up if there's anything that you need to have explained further, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have different stages and if you're comfortable with the stuff I'm showing or you already know it, you can go a little further. But like the first stage is always the most important one. So I'm always showing a lot, so it will definitely be too much for most of you. Like prioritize what you want to work on, right? But this way I can cater to almost everyone. It doesn't matter if you're just a beginner or not just familiar with the topic, or if you're an advanced guy and just wanna do more. Just be adamant that you really work on the stuff that I show first and then go deeper into the rabbit hole if you feel comfortable, right? If you need to see anything again, just tell me. Are you are absolutely allowed to ask questions, right? No, like ask questions. If there's anything you don't understand or any further information you need, ask away. Like the more you ask, the better it is at the end, right? And for the people that don't know me, grab me during the open mats, ask me questions, like that's what I'm here for, right? So don't be shy, just come get me, right? So um, one of the first things you need to understand is what, like what is pummeling anyways, right? So really kind of have you. There's many, many different ways to pummel, right? What we're gonna do is pummel with the legs. So pummeling is switching from outside to inside position and vice versa. So that's essentially what pummeling is. Not just with the arms, but with the legs also, right? And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna pummel with the legs because in order to be able to get into passing positions and finally pass the guard and attack the guard, you need to get around the legs a little bit. Right? So if he has inside position, I can't do a whole lot. Like there's some options I have, but if he's controlling the inside space, that's a problem for me, right? It's not just that I don't have as many passing options, it's that I can be attacked with like entanglements as well. So that's really not good for me, right? So pummeling is not only for offensive, but defensive purposes as well. Right? So if I don't do anything, like we can like just enter the legs, go into action, do whatever, right? Because he has the inside position, he has the inside space. Like if I just take away one inside space from him, that's not as easy anymore. Now we have both, both have options, right? If I can steal it entirely, even more options for me, even less for him. Against good people, you will most likely get one inside space and not two. Because people are pummeling as well, right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today in different meets. We have different ways of pummeling into positions 
And the most important ones from top position when you're past, come on with the legs, are shin circles, knee pins, and high steps. And that's more or less what we're gonna do today, right? We're gonna start with shin circles and a high step because that's one of the most fundamental ways to do it. Um, some of you may be inclined to pummel with shin circles more, some of you may be inclined to pummel with knee pins more, depending on like what your game consists of and how you like to pass. But both are good, both are valid, and you need to be able to do both to be really effective, right? So what, where we're gonna start is you have has inside position and inside control. What does that mean? Inside position just means his legs are on the inside. Inside control means he's actively controlling my legs, right? So if I just want to disconnect now, like it's really, really hard because he has sticky hooks. I can't make that happen. So I have to somehow go pump. Like the things we're going to do first are a little just drilling the position to be able to get into position. It's not that it will necessarily be that way all the time. It's just getting the movements done, you know? So the first thing we're gonna look at is his hip line and his knee line. If he has his knee line above his hip line, he has knee elbow connection, right? He just can't pass. So I need to pummel and I can't just high step out of it because he can follow. That's where the shin circle and the back pummel comes from. Shin circling has different means of pummeling. The first one is the back pummel. That's the one we're gonna start with, right? So I can just place my hands on the knees. I have a straight back, I have a good position and I'm gonna circle my knee in and steal the inside position with the knee first, right? So you can really, really just turn all the way, almost 90 degrees. You see that my knee like loosens up this hook a little? That's what I wanna aim for. Sometimes when people are really, really high, I sometimes need to like push the knee down a little, keep the knee elbow connection. Sometimes I need to push the knee down a little so I can steal the inside space with my knee. What I'm gonna do then is project all my weight onto the other leg so I can make this light, right? You don't wanna fall down, so this knee doesn't drop. At the beginning, what happens most of the time is people do this, like they drop down. You don't wanna drop down. You wanna get your weight onto the other foot and just put the heel towards the butt. And now my knee still has contact and is guiding his leg to the outside. And I'm gonna step into the crook of his knee. Don't step shallow because it's easy for him to repump, right? Because there's space. But if I go into the knee pit and I have my hand on the knee, it's really, really hard to pummel it. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So it's just pummeling in here. Did you see that he got, like that my leg got cached by his foot? I just pull the knee a little and I can still pummel him, right? So keep that in mind. Like your partner, if you can't make it work at the beginning, can be a little looser. It needs to have contact, but at the beginning, try to cater a little bit to your partner. But if you can really, really do it well, then of course, try to hold the hook so your partner can practice it with some resistance, right? Now, the problem with this starts to occur when his knee is below the hip line. Because when it's below the hip line, I can't pin his heel towards, towards his butt. And it's really hard to like pummel here. Keep it. It's really, really hard to pummel because I really, I really can't control it. And that's where the high step comes in. So I'm gonna project all my weight onto the second leg again, and I'm just gonna high step out and put it back in. And I can't do that if his knee is above his hip line. If I try that here, like he can follow, he can unbalance me. So that's what you have to pay attention to. Where's his knee line in relation to his hip line? If the knee line is above the hip line, I need to go back pummel into the position. But if his knee is below the hip line, I need to high step out of it, right? And the last shin circle pummel we're gonna do is the front pummel. Because sometimes it's like just on the edge and I can't make him lose contact. Or he just has really, really long legs compared to mine. So if I try to high step, he can still follow. And I'm gonna go to the front pummel. So I'm gonna go pummel to the front. It almost seems identical to the high step, but the high step really is just up and down. And the front pummel is really pummeling towards the front. So we have the back pummel where I pummel to the back. We have the high pummel if the knee's below the hip line and can just stomp it back in. 
and if it can still follow, I need to front pummel into the position. And that's more or less what we're gonna do now. <laughs> Start with the back pummel. And now you notice it's a lot of information. But the context is important. You need to take a look at his body position and then you can see what you need to do in able to, to be able to pummel into the inside space. Okay, so once again, familiarize yourself with the back pummel on this side and then on this side. I don't lose balance, I don't drop, I have contact with my knee the whole time. I never lose that because my knee's guiding me, right? Now I step back out and it's the same thing. I'm just gonna be here into the crook of the knee. Turn, see, the knee stole the inside space and I can of pummel it. Don't worry about the hands yet, it's not important. Just get the movement done, right? And if you can make that work, start high pummeling. If you can make that work, start front pummeling. Okay, but always keep your hand on the outside so he can't just re-pummel the middle. So just play around with the position a little and you can switch whenever you see fit, right? You can do it a couple of times and it's your partner's turn. And be a good partner, so if you don't have problems with that, let him practice a little more, right? Try to explain stuff. And if you can't make it work, just tell me, I'll come to you. Does anybody need to see it again? Any explanations you need to hear again? You won't try? Good. One, two, go. Come here, bud, scooter. I had that question come up quite a lot, so I'll show it again, right? Your hands are not fixed on one point, and they're not always just blocking the knees. Sometimes they're pulling, sometimes they're pushing towards him, sometimes they're pushing out. Especially when you can't win the battle of the knee coming over the shin, or you can't beat the toes, you need to pull. Because pulling brings his, his foot and his shin down. That's why it's easier to pummel from there. What I mean by that is sometimes, like if he is really, really up high, like my knee can't beat his shin, right? Like I, I can't come in. So if that happens, I can push a little and now the shin is below. Sometimes I can pull it a little and now the shin is below. And pulling comes into play as well. If you can beat the knee but can't beat the foot. See, I'm stuck onto the foot. If I just pull the knee towards me, this happens. See, he loses contact with the foot and now it's easy to pummel in. So your hands work. It's very subtle, but they're still working. Sometimes they're pushing, sometimes they're pulling, depending on what you want to do. And it's not always the same because every one of you has different leg sizes, right? So sometimes in relation to your partner, you need to push, sometimes you need to pull, and with another partner, it may be different. So you just have to get a feel for it, but let your hands work a little, okay? If you can make that work, then I'll give you an extra where you can do additional pummeling with the shin circle and it doesn't change anything, right? So we've been here before. The knee is over the hip line, so I need to back pummel. Sometimes I can start high pummeling, but I need to switch into the front pummel if the knee is above the hip line, right? Or if his leg is really, really long and his knee is below the hip line, but he can still like keep the contact and I need, still need to front pummel. Sometimes it looks like the same, but there's like some small details because high stepping is just bringing the knee towards the chest and just stomping it back down into position. And the front pummel is going front pull with the circle and coming back. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. It's not exclusively one or the other all the time. You need to keep that in mind. Sometimes you just have to have a little movement. Sometimes you need more of a movement to be able to pummel it. Can I ask a question right? at that point? Sure. When you're doing that high step, are you pushing on the knee to try and prevent him following as much as possible? I can initially, yeah. but I need to let go of the knee. Otherwise, yeah. I can't pummel my foot. Right, so it's a little bit timing based. When we hear, like I can push it down, but when I come up, I need to loosen the grip up so I can step in. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in the way. To, to move your Yeah, exactly. So if you can make that work, the back pummel, the high pummel and the front pummel, you can go inside out pummel. What I mean by that is when we're here and we're gonna pummel this one to the inside, 
I can cross step and pinch my knees. See, still have the inside position of the knees and I can just pummel this one out to come into leg break positions. And from here, if I have the shin block, I can pummel that back in if I want to. So you can add that if you feel you're ready for it. But the mechanics of the back pummel, high pummel and front pummel are way more important. Okay, so if you can make that work, you can play around with it a little bit because it's not one way or the other. You can go both ways with it. You can pummel from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside. Does that make sense for you guys? Mm -hmm. Anybody need to see anything again? Maybe the inside out pummel one more time? Yeah. So I pummel one leg to the inside and I just cross that. I need my knees to be pinched. If we are here and he gets like a reverse delay reverse hook, I need to pummel a little differently. I need to set the hook first. That's one of the reasons why I'm here because he can't set the hook. Of course, your base is not that great, so you won't be staying here for long periods of time, right? So not, now I just scoop my hip a little over so I can bring weight on the second foot again. And now I just pummel this one out and I can shim block or I can try to go under to the leg drag right away. That's the options I have from you. Okay? One, two, go. Any questions regarding this? Could everyone make it work? It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be good enough for you to be able to replicate it at home, right? That's what we aim for. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be good enough so you can take it home and work with that stuff at home without just it falling apart completely. Do you know what I mean? And we need to be able to get that down this session and the next one. So if, you, if that's not good enough, don't worry. Like the, after the break, I have a one hour session and I'm gonna explain different ways of drilling things, like how you drill and how to improve. And we're gonna do that with the techniques we've been doing this class. So you get plenty of time, you can work on that and try to make it work against resistance and stuff like that. So if it's not good enough now, it will be later, so don't worry about it. Can you go over the, the knee line and the hip line? Which pummel to use where the knee line here? Yes. So, what Wille wants most of the time is having his knees above his hip line. Because otherwise, like this space is open and that's where I want to get for passing, right? Yes. So good people will hold their knee elbow connection. And against a good knee elbow connection, I can just step out of the position because he will catch me. That's where I need to back pump because this works against me. A good knee elbow connection, a good alignment on his side. But things are not perfect. Sometimes I step back and we're here, right? And the knee travels below the hip line. And that's where high steps come into play. And there's an area in between where the high step is not working well and then you go front pummel from there. Okay, that's, that's the summary of, of the most important things regarding this position. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, the second big way to pummel I want to go over with you guys is the knee pin pummeling. We have many ways of knee pinning, just like we have many ways to shin circle, right? We have the back pummel, we have the front pummel. Those are all shin circles because I'm circling my shin. Um, just for the record, windshield wiper and shin circles are related, but they're not the same, okay? Because a windshield wiper is this kind of motion, right? It's this kind of motion. It's very, very important, right? But it's not the same like circling the shin in mid-air. It's very, very closely related, but it's not the same thing. But sometimes, and that's important to know for you, Sometimes people talk about windshield wiper when they mean shin circles and stuff like that. So just be mindful of that, that they may intend to talk about the shin circle and not the windshield wipering per se. So with knee pinning, I can't get my foot on the inside yet. So I use the knee. It's the same principle we've been doing with the shin circle, just that we're gonna pin it to the floor first. So when we're here and he has a good knee elbow connection, what I want to do is grab one side of each knee and push it down so I can steal the inside space with my knee again. 
right? If I can, I go thumb up grip here. It's not always there, but now would be a good partner to give your partner that. Sometimes you can just flick your foot into the inside position here, but don't count on it if people have really, really sticky hooks. Sometimes that's hard, depending on your mobility. So when we're here, we're gonna go leg assist, we step on the foot, and then we're gonna pummel in. And now I come back to the middle. So I wanna get his heel towards the butt with body weight of mine. And now I've beaten the inside space here. This is a really, really, really good way. And you tend to see that kind of pummeling more and more at the upper levels. Doesn't mean that the shin circle is not important, that, they, that you don't need it, but that, that's what tends to happen when good people fight against each other. Because you want to break the position first, you want to get an angle. And that's what we're doing here, right? So we're pushing to the side, getting the thumb up grip, thumb up, not down. It's weight bearing. If he tries to move it, it's really, really hard. It doesn't have anything to do with strength. Because I'm putting weight on it. And now from here, it's just stepping on the foot and getting back onto the inside. Don't stay here and let him hook the knee pit. Because he can unbalance you from there and I don't want that. So I really want to scoot back to the middle and from here I'm in a good passing position. And if you just use that to get out of the position and try to mobility pass from there, that's totally fine. Because I, I'm, I'm stuck here, right? I wanted to mobility pass, agility pass, whatever you want to call it, loose passing, but you could get a good connection. So if I want to go back to mobility passing from there, I can do that if I want to. I can just use that to get out of the position. You don't need to proceed from headquarters from there. Does that make sense for you? So that's the inside knee pin. Because I'm pinning on the same side on the inside. We have outside knee pinning as well. And we have cross inside knee pinning as well. Sorry, can you just explain where you step on the foot? Are you stepping sure. on the shin? Are you stepping on the heel? Get the inside. I'm stepping on the foot and then insert the foot. Okay. So you're, you're like pushing the foot? I'm pushing the foot down, exactly. I don't want to have a long lever, so I tend to go low because it makes it easier. So when we're here, pin it, push it down, come to the middle, and be on. Right? That's the straight knee pin. The cross knee pin is essentially a weave position. Sometimes I go straight before I come cross, but sometimes I just come cross with this. And this is the leg weave position where you can go past from. Or just leave the position if you want to do that. Now, I'm pinning the knee with a cross. So, the leg weave and the cross knee pin are related. The weave is the position itself and the pin is the mechanic behind it. Okay, there's a difference. It's a subtle one, but it's still a difference. Now, then, we have an outside knee pin as well. So when I come up knee to knee and now switch my hips, that's where we're gonna end up here, right? And if we switch sides, we have the last one, the straight outside. This is cross outside, there's a straight outside. Those are the kinds of knee pins you're gonna get into. If you wanna see how people can use that to do other things, like get into leg riding because it's essentially leg rides. That's what we're gonna do with that, right? It's like wrestling techniques that drop down to jiu-jitsu now. So Craig has an instruction on that. If you wanna check that out, you can do that. But you can just Google or YouTube leg riding and you're gonna find lots of stuff like crab rides. Crab rides are leg rides, so, right? So keep that in mind. So for service. We have the inside knee pin here, and you need to be able to come up. Be a little mindful that sometimes the foot gets stuck in the pants. Just don't rip your partner's foot apart, right? That's the first one. The second one is the cross knee pin. It's this. It's the leg weave position. The third one is the outside knee pin. It's this. And if you switch sides, it's the same thing with the other leg. 
right? Get the first one down before you start with the rest because it's the most important one. Okay, but if you can make that work, play around with the different ways to knee pin from the inside and from the outside. Right, so we have a total of four knee pins. Do you have any, so in terms of taking it home, people don't lean over so easily unless it's Christmas. Um, what about the mechanics to actually get them well on the side of the hip? Because sometimes it's even hard just to get the outside. With one particular thing or just in general? Uh, I'm, I mean just in general. So because people don't want to be here and they're bracing against the elbow and they'll come back here. Come on, I jump. Using me. It's really hard for you because again I'm using body weight. Right? Yeah. So when we're here and I go to the side, yeah. it's really, really hard for you to not get that. But you can you can remain your knee elbow connection, but that doesn't change the fact. Keep the hook. Sorry. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Doesn't change the fact that I can pump it. Yeah. Right? And because I'm using body weight, it gets really dependent. Like sometimes you can elbow post out of it, but then I'm just going to switch sides. Yeah. Right? Because you can't do both sides. Yeah. And if you open up too much, you're giving me underhooks. So now yeah. that becomes important when it comes to the actual passing and not the pummeling, yeah. right? But the good thing about the elbow post is that you can keep your center line intact, but it opens up. Yeah. And there's positions where that doesn't matter, like when I Toriando, for example. So when we're gonna go Toriando from here, and you post that one, yeah. post it, exactly, frame it what? With, with hand, exactly. Now, from here, I can't dive into underhooks. It's not possible from here because I'm gonna expose myself, right? But when we're here and you do that, yeah. right? It's like I have underhooks everywhere. Yeah. And that becomes a problem for you. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And because I'm using body weight, it's not easy to hold that up for long periods of time. Anyways. And you also slightly staggered the knees. Exactly. To help them move. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Well, that's a that's good detail for you guys as well. So. I'm not just pushing down here, I'm pulling this apart a little, so the lever gets longer again. And there's more space here. Right? Like, those are details that are not super important at the beginning, because you need to get the gross motor motion down first. But this becomes <laughs> important later. Right? Anything else you need to see? But did that ask you uh, answer yeah, the question? Yeah, that the question, yeah, and for you. Could you make it work? Like the first one I showed. Could everyone make that work? One thing I saw from time to time is you really pushing down with the hand. So you went here and then you went here. Where in reality it's both at the same time, right? So I go here and I push with the knee and the hand at the same time. Now it's weight bearing again. And I don't have to switch, right? Because sometimes if you just use the hand, he can pummel this one to the outside as well. And now you're stuck in a different position, right? If you want that, wanted that anyways, then that's a good thing. But some people are really good with retention from there and that's not necessarily what you want. So if you want that, you want it by yourself and not because he did it voluntarily. You want to force things, like from a mindset perspective, right? I force it, he doesn't get to he doesn't get a say in it. He wants it there, I put it there. Right? This, but that's just a mindset thing. And be aware of, of different things, right? So he could come on here to start unbalancing me this direction and then I need to switch. That's where like all these positions come into play. <laughs> it's not you always do this or this. It's all connected. And the better you get, the more you will connect those things and then it becomes really, really effective. And what I want to do now is get into the floating position. Like the class is not about float passing. Like that's what Gordon made popular. Like there's plenty of people who did it before him. So he did invent shit, but he beat everyone's ass with it. So kind of, you know, he made it popular again. And he bought some innovations to it. So there's some things he brought into it that most pe people weren't aware of before. So he definitely has a say in it, but it was there before. So just that you know that, right? 
The float position is essentially headquarters or a straight hamstring position where you project your weight forward instead of a heavy hip. So when we've been pummeling here, right, we've come into position and now we've stayed down with heavy hips. What I want to do now is get heavy hands. That's different, right? Now, at the beginning, don't worry about your hand position too much, right? Because there's different grips you can play with. Like people do this, for example. Some people go to the armpits, one side or the other. Some people grip here. Like the most important thing at the beginning is that you project your weight onto your hands. And you see my butt, let's move. My butt rises up. So when we're here, the butt rises and my hip pocket is almost at its knee. This gives me the opportunity to go back on from here. If I'm down low, like I can't reach that. Even if my weight is forward, but I'm low, like I don't have the dexterity or the space to do it. But if I come up, this becomes easy. And this is a back combo we've already been doing, right? And now you can hook it, extract it, and keep coming into positions if you want to. Right? But this shows that, all right, this is a shin circle. This is a back combo. And it works the same as it was before, just from a different position in a different context. Right? So, do one of the first pummels. Doesn't matter which one and just get here. Don't stay here. Bring your butt above it. That's what you want. <coughs> Come here. Keep the thumb up grip and get the armpit for the moment. And just project your way forward. And keep this hooked here. You don't want it to slip down here. You don't want that to happen. Right, so keep it hooked. Come up. Start back on the hook it, extract it. Sometimes you need to open your hip a little, it's like this way it's stuck. But if I open my hip a little, it becomes easy. If you don't want to get trapped in the three quarter mount, follow the foot out first, right? So when we're here, and you pummel, and you bring this one out, follow this to the other side, and everything is fine. And now you can settle down. <coughs> It's the first thing, back pummel. It's the same things we did before, nothing changed. Just the context, right? Now, when we wanted to pummel and he kept the position, what did we do? We started to front pummel, right? That's the same thing we're gonna do from there. So, when we've been pummeling into position from here, step on it, I project my weight forward and I wanna back pummel here. He can kind of prevent that by straightening his leg. So now this becomes hard. But do you see that there's a pocket here that opens up? So I can just front pummel here. <clears throat> right, and now I can choose if I want mount or knee right on either side. The last thing is sometimes there's not enough space or he blocks it off or I just like the knee pin better, but we can also knee pin from there, right? So, inside knee pin, gonna come here. I wanna get the back pummel, but he extends his leg. What does he do when he does that? He gives me a longer lever. I go outside knee, switch the hips. And because I have this grip, most of the time it's easy to pummel in there. If I can't get the underhook, just switch sides. Over here, on the other side. So all the pummel things we did before come into play when you pummel pass. And pummel passing at the beginning is hard because it's a lot of weight distribution, feel, quick changes of direction and pummeling. It's not e an easy way to pass, but even if you can't make the passing work, Learning how to pummel from those positions will make your pummeling better, which makes your passing better, which makes your defense against leg entanglements better. So even if you can't make the passive itself work, the skill you take out of it, it's still super, super important. And it's not lost time in any stretch of the imagination. 
Do you know what I mean? Good. So, knee pin. From here, get this projectile pommel. Extract it, pommel it, and everything is fine. I want to do that, but he keeps the connection. So I just front pommel. And we're here, you can do different kinds of pommel after if you want to. If it's the same position and I can't make it work, I bring the inside of my knee to the outside of his knee and just switch hips. If I can get the underhook here, great, I can pass to that side. If not, I just switch sides. And you can do that quick if you want to. If you want that side anyways, you can force it right away, right? Over here, I come back up. Doesn't work like I can pummel this right away if I want to. I don't need to wait. And like this kind of things makes you so much more effective in passing per se, because there's so many passes you do off of those positions anyways, right? If you don't see that yet, I guess you just have to trust my judgment for now, right? Because you may not be knowledgeable enough yet to see all those opportunities and passes from there. But if you want extra information on it, just grab me, right? How you can make it work for your style of passing. And as I said before, if it's just for you to not get wrecked by leg entanglements, then that's also good. Because this position gets forced all of the time. It's not just because I want to be there voluntarily. When we're here and I pressure into the little, he has two ways of dealing with it, pushing or kicking above. Where are we now? It's the same position, just that I didn't choose it. And if people are good, they're gonna pummel and then you're gonna be in like entanglement, so you don't want that. But if you can just use those things to get out of there, not necessarily even score, but let's say he, he kicks me out and I say, oh, I don't want that, get out of here. And that's already, that's a good outcome for you if you don't want to be there, right? So it's not just because you force it and you want to be there, it's because people are going to put you in the spot. And if you know what to do then, everything will get easier. And if you can score off of it, even better. Does I need to show, do I need to show anything again or does it work for you? Because again, it's a lot of information, right? But it's more or less the same things we've been doing all the time. Can you show it again? Of course. So first, get an inside position, right? So we're here. That's the first thing. Doesn't matter how I get here. Now, keep the thumb up grip. Get the thumb up grip in the armpit. Project yourself forward. That's the starting position, right? You can see that my hip is high on the knee. There's space on the shin here. That's why I need to be able to back pummel my foot over. And now I can just push my knee in, point my toes outwards, elevate my hips a little to get it out and just pummel this foot over. And we're in position. If he's following, so we're gonna end up in the same position. We're here, but he's following. I can't pummel this, this space for the front pummel. I can't come here. If I can't or don't want to do it that way, because I'm not coming in, or I just prefer the knee pin, inside of the knee to the outside of the knee, and hip switch. And if you want to, you can pummel this, switch sides, right? I know it's a lot, but it will pay dividends in the long run, because it's a universal skill. It's a multi-tool, it's not just for those positions. Okay, one, two, go. Any questions? Now, answer honestly. Do you need to get more time to practice that? Yes. Or, okay, very good. <laughs> so, I just saw the friend. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show the same things again, answer a couple of questions for everyone because there were some good questions, and then you just keep practicing it. And if you can make it work and you need an extra, get me, I'll show you extras. Okay, so short review. Many people had problems with the initial knee pin because they were just pinning this one 
without manipulating this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put this Y arm on the outside here and on the inside here because I'm going to transfer my weight into it and I'm going to push this one down here. The more I can push it down, the easier it will get for me, right? But if his knee is pointing towards my other shoulder, then that's already very, very good. I don't need to have it in my hip pocket, okay? Because if I have it in my hip pocket, just that you know, the weave is the position you would get into because the space is closed down for me to pummel this one on the inside. Do you know what I mean? So if you really like press it down a lot, like there's no space for me to pummel this one, now I need to go here. If you want to do that, then great. If not, do enough, but don't do too much. You want to be here, not here. So if this happens, the next question was, okay, I feel vulnerable here because I might get elevated. And this is no big deal <coughs> as long as you seek hip height. So if my hip stays down and my leg gets elevated, I get unbalanced, right? When we're here and he starts elevating and I elevate my hip, I actually get a longer lever. And I can shortcut all the things we did before by going here and do the outside knee pin. It's just you need to be aware of it, right? And if you seek hip height, you can still make the, make the first pummel work. Like, let's say we're here and now he starts elevating and like, <laughs> really elevate. Is that all? You can't do more? Okay. Do we have someone who can do more? Like a, someone with long legs. Long legs, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So when we're here and I get this, now elevate me. Yes, and kick me a little towards this. Exactly. That's what I don't want to happen, right? So if we are here and he's doing that fast and I don't do anything, then I fall. Let's see, I just seek the pipe and I can hip switch from there. Be aware of the switch into the roof. Because the good people are going to invert it to the legs from there. So don't go weave from there. If you don't feel comfortable with the leg entanglement game that people are going to throw at you, if you do that. You can, right, they'll invert to the back, did you say? No, invert into the legs. Into the legs. So, what, what I mean by that? I just didn't hear it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because you're old. Yeah, yeah. yeah so when we're cool. here and he picks, and I do this, he may start inverting into the legs, right? And you don't want that to happen, obviously. Yeah. So it's always safer to go with the knee pin because if you use the outside knee pin, you can elevate into the legs or invert into the legs. What I mean by that is when we're here and he starts elevating now and I keep my knee to the outside, there's no way for him to get this one on the inside, even if he starts inverting. So if worse comes to worse, like I force like this kind of position, which is fine by me because you can work on back exposure or you can work on passes from here because he's, he's not super stable like with a little bit of pushing like I can get him down I can top spin I can do many things if I want to do but the most important thing is you are staying from the lack of tenements. so if people really elevate you they create space and a long lever if you're not careful they can expose that space with attacks into the legs but if you're aware he also gives you a longer lever for the outside knee pit and it becomes easier right just be aware of the threat and if it happens to you you're like ah shit okay i need to be aware of the knee uh, like, because if he extends his leg is it also cool to um, front panel absolutely yeah just yeah. Like, see the context. yeah absolutely absolutely so the front pommel is great if you haven't been unbalanced too much because then you're gonna fall if you're not unbalanced that much you can go for a quick front pommel and it works out fine so that's a little bit of a timing issue but that definitely works okay, so, yes. okay so those questions were good questions so try to implement that and keep that in mind when you're working on it so if we're gonna bring you the rest. So we've been pummeling into here, 
I get the thumb up grip, I pummel this to the inside and I scoop over very low. I get the thumb up grip in the armpit, I'm gonna project my weight forward, which gives you the ability to pummel this way. If he follows, when I wanna pummel, so straighten your legs so I can pummel, I go front pummel. You see, sometimes you need to go a little further, you get enough, so you get enough space to get in, right? You need to get a feel of how much you need to move to get your, your pummel in. If you're not moving enough, then you don't have space to pummel it. If you move too much, you might get unbalanced. So, it's a feeling. If we're here, and it's the same position, yes, it's the same position, and I can't front pummel, or I don't want to, and you straighten the back, then I go knee to the outside, start to come here. If I can get an underhook, I can pass to this side. If I can't get it, I'm gonna pass to the other side. Both is fine. If you feel comfortable, you can force the other side right away. So, when we're here, and I go pin, and I go into position, and I wanna go knee pin, I can use that to pummel this directly. Sometimes I pummel it into, wait, sometimes I pummel it into the leg rack, sometimes I pummel it into the knee pin. Both are fine, depending on the context, depending on what you want to have. So, in the floating position, uh, are you trying to keep the knee on the mat all the time, in front of the feet? Well, it's, it's not that much about keeping the knee on the mat, it's more about weight risk distribution. So, I want to I want to tip to the side, come feel it. Thank you. Yes, no worries. So, when we're here, and I've pummeled this to the inside, right? I typically don't want to be here. Right. It's definitely not wrong, mm -hmm. but you have multiple attacks in different directions and I have the same. If I took you a little more to the side, it becomes more predictable for me, that can pin you a little better. So it's this knee doing that? Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're here. Right. I bring weight onto the knee. Right. Like here, you feel the difference, right? Yes, yes. It's way easier to come and to move me around. True. But if we're here, like I can seek height and everything and pummel and do everything I wanted to do. I have this weight here, so you can't move it. Mm -hmm. And I can bring more weight onto the leg as well, so it's way, way harder to pummel out of the position. So spinning this leg and this hip down. And pinning the cross shoulder. Right. So the, the reason why this position is so good is because of diagonal control. Right? I control the hip on the left side, on my left side, and the shoulder on the right side with the thumb up grip in the armpit. And because I additionally pinned the near side arm, it's really hard for him to move there. It's not that easy if you distribute your weight properly. So it seems like a loose position, but if you get every control grip I show, it's way, way easy. So of course be aware that you will not get that outcome every time. But if you can't get those grips, search them. Get them and it will be way, way easy. And if you can't get them, you can still make it work. You just need to position your limbs in a way that they're not easily reachable. What I mean by that, if I tap it again, <coughs> is if I can't get the thumb up grip, like I can pretty much get this one every time. Now I need to keep this away so he can't just rip it in, right? He can't reach it. I mean, he can reach it, but he can't do anything with it. But if we're here, like that, that can be an issue. So you don't want that if you don't have it pinned. So just keep that in mind. But it's the same thing. Okay, so I give you a couple of extra minutes to still work over the stuff I showed. And as I said before, if, if there's any extras you need, just let me know, I'll give you some extras. Anybody see, need to see anything again? Okay, one, two, go. So, could you make it work? As I said before, it doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be good enough so you can take it home and further practice it. That's all I'm asking. I'm, I'm not demanding too much here, I hope. Last question. So, um, we're starting in a neutral posture here to allow the top person to practice and they can choose which side they go. Because if we're here for more than half a second, your bottom person is going to grab both angles and try and Obviously. Yeah. So, can you talk about that initial entry in and then yes. that timing of things? So, 
when you engage a guard, we're speaking about an engagement phase, right? Yeah. So come here for a second. So <laughs> let's say you're you're playing a supine guard, right? So yeah. you're here. The engagement phase is a really important phase, and people tend to um, skip that phase, especially in training, and it will hurt you in competitions in, in the long run. Because like in training, we're here and like now we start and you already have your position, yeah. right? Don't forego that phase of engagement, right? So even in training, we're here and that's where I start. And for the most part, you you're, will not be in a parallel stance for most of the time, at least when he's able to reach your legs. Like when, when we're here, like you may be able to be here from time to time, but once you engage, you always have one foot in front. There's some exceptions to that, but that's generally how you want to do it. And now if we're here, even if you get that hook, now I can start to work. So for now, we've been doing this. So you just can practice both sides of the coin and be comfortable with it. But that would not be how you would actually be when you're fighting. Because if he gets both legs, you're going to be taken for a right, right? You never want to give him double lever control to the hip. Which essentially is, if you control both legs, you have both levers to the hip control, that's where you're going to fall. So never give him two legs. That's where like kickouts become important, for example. So when we're here and you have the legs, like I want to practice kickouts, stuff like that. But because we've got limited time, and I wanted to show like I do diverse pummeling things, so you're not just stuck with one. I'm giving you a little bit of the fundamental way of pummeling with shin circles and with knee pinning. And then you can take that and implement it in many kind of things without going into deep, just because you have a fundamental understanding of it and you may be able to, to combine those things. But yeah, if we would be in a match or we'd be grappling, I would not be parallel and give you both legs. It's just a means to drill them. So, so then if we start in a staggered stance, are you going to pin this knee preferably? Or is it the far knee? It, it depends a little bit on which way you want to pass Right? Because um, some people want to have the right leg on the inside and some people want to have the leg, left leg on the inside. So depending on which way you want to, want to go, you can just choose to do both. Okay. Just be aware that if he has the near ankle and I go pummel in here and say, yeah, I've pummeled in and now we're here, you grab the second leg and I'm in for a right anyways, right? So don't give him both, yeah. right? So if I want to pummel this one in, like I, I'd strip that grip first so it can, it can come in, yeah. right? So keep those things in mind. Does that answer the question? It does. More questions? Okay, great. As I said before, especially the float position, it's not an easy position to get into. Like, I'd not be surprised if you will take some time to make it work. But just being aware of your foot position and working with your feet like it would be working with your arms, Will benefit you because you just get better in understanding position that will lead to passes, positions that will get you in trouble and how to come out of those things. Right? So don't be in a bad mood if you can't pummel past someone just from the get-go because it's a long-term skill. Right? But play around with it and if it doesn't work, that's all right. It's the same with everything, right? Is everyone familiar with Shen Shin? Is it a pain in the ass for you guys? Yes. <laughs> yes? Okay, not anymore. So, the knee pin is, as of now, the most prominent way to pummel and pass the Shen Shin. I give you three different means to do so um, with more control after because you need to have a, little, a couple more steps. So shin on shin is bringing your shin on their shin and then I'm balancing me this direction or this direction or this direction, right? It's a multi-directional tool. 
I never want to go that way unless I have some form of upper body control and I'm really good with knee sliding. Like I can make that work, it's not impossible, but it's not an easy skill against someone who has a good shin on shin. So what I want to do is double shoulder pose for the moment, just to get the direction done. And I want to go in a way that he doesn't want to go. This side, so I can pin the knee. I can place my hands and pummel this one in. And if I can pass, that's no big deal. At least I destroyed his shin and shin guard. And if you know how to do it, you can do it with an underhook and, pa and pass right away. But if you get an underhook, that, that's great, right? But the second thing before we are talking about underhooks is the timing. Because this is a timing-based thing. Just because you can make it work technically doesn't mean you can make it work in a situation where he really wants to get Ashi or unbalance me in that direction, right? So I need to start practicing that with resistance. So if we're here and you can make this one here work, now you really want to go in that way. So do it once so people can see what you want to do. Got Ashi. Exactly. And now you're in a lack entanglement, which is not the end of the world if you know how to deal with it, but you're deeper into the position, the risk is higher, right? So, when Vila wants to go that way, I really want to go that way, <laughs> and to pummel it. And sometimes, when I'm a little late, and let's say he already put me a little there, like I can still make that work and pummel it in. It just becomes more difficult. The timing, the time frame you have to be able to make it work is shorter. <clears throat> so your timing and your foot placement needs to be better. So as soon as you can make the initial pummel work, with most of you should be able to, because we did the initial position anyway, since it doesn't change a whole lot, other than that you don't get it from a grip, then you can pummel out of that. You do it with a little resistance. And if you can make it work, go later, 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 and see how late you can go and still pummel that in. So if you were good with that, and he is good, he's going to be quick in it. And I can still make it work relatively late if I know how to do it, right? So even if we're here, he goes here, 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 wait, go, 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 can still make it work, right? But you need to be able to articulate with your feet well. So practice that. And if that works well, do it with an underhook and go for the crossing slide right away. What I mean by that is when I have someone engaging in a shin on shin, and I know that, and he gets the position, I like say, oh, now I don't want that. So the next time he comes in, I know he's going to get shin on shin. So I place my hand, which gives me the underhook right away. No, I still want to go that way. I don't want to pass right away, which you can do, but it's more difficult. So you want to go this way. Place the hat not on the same side as the underhook, but the other side, which makes the pass easier. And now the pummel is the same thing, and I just switch sides for the cross knee scoop. And I'm super deep into the position, and because of my underhook at the head position, you can re pummel. If you go that deep into the underhook at the head post on the near side, it should be very, very difficult to prevent the knee So, of course, you can go here right away, but oh, you're late, you're gonna step out, and if he comes in again, I know it's there. Get the head in position, drive that way, see? Now pummel it, cut to the other side. Now you can overwrap, you can underhook, you can pin this, like you can do different things with this, but the head post and the underhook are important. Right? And that's how good people typically Pass shin on shin guard. And if you can make that work, you can lure it into the shin on shin and pass it off of that. So it's pretty much the same even how we've been doing all the time, just in a different context. Can you show it from your butt side so we can see the good work? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here on shin on shin. Ah, I don't want that. All right, here I pummel the head. No, I drive this direction. I post. Head is close. And all I just pummel in. And cross knee slide. Right? 
And does the free leg always have to get, preferably gets the bottom of that? Did you do it one time when you pushed his thigh to free it? I'm not exactly When you did it super late. Okay. Um, when it's super, super late, I just need to have a post on the leg, which enables me to pummel my leg in. Yeah. And depending on how late it is and how the angles play off, it's not always be the foot. It's going to yeah. be the calf. Sometimes it's even the thigh. But you want to have the best angle you can get. And you need to get a feeling for it. And the placement of the foot will change depending on how deep you're into the position and how the angles play yeah. off. Because when I've tried it before, it's fine and stuff. It's like hard to get. And then when you're trying it the second time, if they know what they're doing, what you're trying to do. And so that yeah, yeah. It, it, it definitely becomes a battle. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Okay. One, two, go. So just for good measure, I want to show one more thing and you can practice it a little or practice it later. I just wanted to show you this because it shows you how you can pummel further if you get lifted and elevated through butterfly hooks and stuff like that because it's more or less the same thing, right? So I messed up. He got the wonders, he got the butterfly and now he starts lifting. Right now I am up here. And if I don't do anything, I'm going to get cross ash sheet, straight ash sheet, whatever, right? So I don't want to be here. It's the same thing as before, I'm closing my knees a little, so I can start pummeling this. Sometimes I just pummel one hook, sometimes I get both. Both is fine, right? And now I can do different things with it. If I get one hook in, I can use that to stretch it out a little and get my leg to the inside and see where we end up in the same position we were in before, right? Doesn't change. Like if I can get both, if I pummel this one, I get both. Like I can use this to go either direction, right? I can use the knee. I can use this knee. So I can just knee pin him the same way we did before. Just not coming to the side all the way to really pin it, but to just truck it by. So it's not pin per se, like we've been doing before. I'm just misdirecting his legs. And for that, it's the same thing. It's timing dependent. If you're too late, it's going to be hard. So as soon as I start to get elevated, I actually want to get, like, push up a little. So, wait. So when we're here, see the, the feet are, like, right behind my butt. Like, I can't pump this. So I need to scoot up. So sometimes I even use the pressure he does to project myself a little more forward than he actually initially wanted. So when we're here, I might push here so I'd be able to like start pummeling this, go knee pins and stuff like that. Right? It's super, super feeling based. So you need to practice that a lot before you can get it down because it comes down to angle, it comes down to how mobile you are with your pummeling, like can you put your own heel towards the butt and like scrape off and stuff like that. So the more mobile you are, the, the easier it will be, right? But you can do the same back pummel we did before from the shin circle. Doesn't change anything. And from there I can go knee pin in multiple different, different directions if I want to. Like it, it stays the same thing. Against butterfly sweeps, like butterfly hook sweeps, it's the same thing. So let's say we get some underhook here and he wants to sweep me that direction. Go for it. And I'm here and like, ooh, shit, that's not why I want it, right? So if I project myself forward and, and place this foot, this becomes different, right? Because now I have a lever. And it's the same thing. Because I don't have an underhook, I need to pummel to the back door. Right? But it's the same mechanic. So what I want to do is I know he's, he's wanting to sweep me that way. If I just place my foot and he knows how, how a good sumigashi hook sweep works, I'm still going to fall over. I'm suppo I'd like, I suppose that you don't know how to do it, but let's try it out. So when we're here and I did this, he can still sweep me over, right? So that's not enough. So, when he does it, I want to project myself forward, like on my arm. And now the angle is really, really hard for him to catch up. 
and it's the same thing. But you have to go into the storm with that. If you're trying to go away, you're going to get swept. Right? So you need to get into it. It's the same with the double lift. You want to get into it. Right? So you have two minutes to practice that. Yeah. So go for it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, like if you want to practice it a little, otherwise you can eat, you can roll, you can do whatever you want. But I really wanted to show you that last thing because it makes some things clear we've been doing before as well. So I just wanted to show it. Um, as I said before, don't worry if you can't make it work. Like the, the after the break, we're gonna practice some isolation drills with the stuff we've been already working on. So you can make that work from there. Okay? Cool. Thank you very much. It was a very, very fun first class for me. Thank you. Thank you.